car does have a limited slip, positive traction rear end, so that's always a nice little bonus. Few people have been asking to see some of my own vehicles and a little bit around the yard, so that's what we're going to be doing this week. This is Monday morning out here in the aviary. The birds are happy, I'm happy. We'll get some tools in my hand and show you around some GM cars. So, this Cutlass is around uh, 1982. From 81 to 87, there was very little difference between them, really just the grill mainly. This car, it's like any other project car, it's going to have its good points and its bad points. The good is, it's all original paint, which anybody that's ever worked on bodywork, you know that original paint has factory bodywork under it and not somebody else's cobbled bondo filled hole drilled mess for dent pullers and whatever else underneath there so I kind of know what you're getting the other good things about it the glass is all good windshields not cracked does have the rear defroster the real drawing point of this car is the factory sunroof you see they've sealed her up there with the silicone but it is what it is factory sunroof car i've seen several t-tops but this is the first factory sunroof car that i've ever had in a g body more of the good the frame is rust free some of the not so good you can see all the lower body side trim and the vinyl top moldings are gone you can see some lower body rust here in the quarter panels these get a little bit of rust in the lower wheelhouse there this one it's not really too bad i think there's more over on the driver's side than on this passenger side before we get too far away I'll show you you can see it's just got a little bit of rust coming through there the main rust in the car that needs addressed is the rocker panels and the edges of the floors see the frame there I mean it's got some scale but it's not like coming through at all but the rockers definitely need some attention nice thing about something like this is you do have covered over with carpet when you're done so it's not like outer body where you really need to finish it perfect if you're not building a show car some of the lower body side moldings are in here, so that's good. Does have a tilt column, it's in good shape, not floppy, got the key. They did take the shifter lever out, but guy could find one of those out of a junk column if he needed it. This is not a floor shift car, it's not a console car, but there's one just laying in here. It is the Brome. It's got the original seats that I think would be something could clean up and reuse. Power window car, just pretty average condition. See, there is a little bit of rust coming through on these rockers. Nice thing is that rocker is available in the aftermarket. So, guy has a little bit of a prayer for getting those fixed up. See, she's got the 14-inch chrome mag wheels on it. Don't know if these are Kragers or knockoffs. Everybody back then had their version of the mag wheel. Western Auto and J.C. Whitney and... Montgomery Ward and 
all of anybody that sold a sold a ram or even sold tires i like my stuff's pretty stock so we'll look around the yard i'll see if i've got anything different that i can put on here and save these for something else she's missing the engine and transmission ready to put in there anything somebody wanted to you can look underneath and see Really, the floor pans are largely good. Frame is good. There's just that little bit of rust at the edges where the floors meet the rockers. Show you the passenger rocker here. You can see there's a hole there that needs to be replaced. And then right under the sill here at the edge, it just needs to be patched and made solid again. This is a aftermarket sunroof glass and the assembly, I believe. So if somebody wanted to hack a sunroof into a car, there's the choice for that, I guess. So this car has the wrong wheels, at least to me they're wrong. And there's also missing bumper, should be a big chrome bar under there so i'm gonna head out to the yard objective today is to fix those two issues with the car and before i do that i just want to clean a little bit of the rust off of these bumper ends before i bolt a bumper on there and so that'll be my next goal While that's drying, I'll tell you a little story that happened this weekend. Hi, Pancake. What do you smell, Pancake? Does it smell like gasoline? So I'm delivering a car to Kansas City, and I stop at the gas station to fill gas in the Tahoe, and little backstory, the radio doesn't work in the Tahoe, so I had been on YouTube playing oldies music been kind of on a psychedelic kick so Crimson and Clover was playing and There's that part kind of in the middle where like it's kind of like distorted and there's kind of like all the weird sounds and I hear this like gushing splashing sound and I'm like wait that's not in Crimson and Clover. And I look down and underneath the truck is this splashing cascade of gasoline running down all four sides and the bottom of the tank. And it was not because the pump didn't shut off, click off. There's, and it wasn't because there's a hole in the, in the fill hose either it's got to be something in the tank itself or in the vent that has puncture or something so pretty hairy hairy deal i didn't really have a choice so i started the thing and drove it and it was no flaming wreck Those are sealed up and looking good, so time to head to the 
parts department and see if we can find a bumper. Back in 2018, there were two pretty big salvages that closed, crushed out several thousand cars. And so I was able to get a hold of some parts that way. I cut up about 50 G bodies that year. That was a busy year. That was the year the pickers came, which as promised, I will get a video out soon showing what that was like. So we've got 80s Regal bumper, got a 78 to 80 Cutlass, got a Malibu with the rubber strips, and we've got an 80s Cutlass Coupe rear bumper. So that's gonna work great. Uh, she is missing the nuts. So, go see what I can find for mounting hardware. Alrighty, more G-body bumpers. There's the cubed Christine tribute. Got that on eBay right now. Actually made two of them. So here we have, looks like some bumper bolts that'll work. All right, bumper's on, car looks a little more complete. Did notice when I was under here bolting it on that the car does have a limited slip, positive traction rear end. So that's always a nice little bonus. Here's another Cutlass of mine, 81 to 87. Pretty good body. I see some rust in the trunk lid, and other than that, pretty good shape. I'd have to look at the VIN to see what the year is. They have changed the front bumper cover with the grills, so they're probably not the match to the year of the car. Chrome bumper is missing. I do have one that goes along with this car. Catch the little diesel hood ornament. Windshield's good in this car. It is 307 Olds. Seized hard, must have had water in it. You can see the critters have nested in here, so some of your wiring and your hoses gonna be not so good. Radiator's gone, but all that stuff, if you're putting your engine in there, may not even use anyway. Been off the road about 20 years. You can see interiors really pretty decent. It'll clean up. I didn't have keys for this, so I pulled the lock plate out of the steering column. Probably needs that upper bearing. Find them on eBay for pretty reasonable. Over here we've got early Monte Carlo. You can tell the years on these Monty's by the grills and the tail lights. This car here is a 78 because it's got the flat tail light with the little side marker. So trunk lid's got 
a hit there and a crease. I believe that's an aluminum lid, so maybe that aluminum would be a little easier or harder to fix than a steel lid, depending. I don't know all that much about them. I've never personally done body work on aluminum panels before. This car came out of Missouri, so the frame is really rusty. They said it ran and drove when it was parked, but it's had the critters in it. Floors are gone. Strictly a parts car. Show you a little bit of the plastic. This interior trim on GM cars gets notoriously chalky. And then must have had a hood hinge that got stiff on this side because you can see got the crease in the hood there. Through the yard we go. I'll show you my last G-Body Monte Carlo. Actually getting really picked on G-Bodies. Sold the El Camino, the Malibu wagon. Do have this Cutlass. It's not a terrible car. Could be fixed if somebody wanted to. Not a rust bucket at least. Don't know anything about it mechanically. It's kind of been taken apart, but the stuff's laying in there. It just kind of got its rough edges. So this Monte Carlo, you can see It's got its rough edges. This one, I believe, is a 79. Seventy-eight, I think, had like a crest in the marker lights. They're out there on the corners and just kind of a magnet for destruction. <laughs> Hood looks good on this car. It does have a 305 that turns, so it might be good fodder for a will it run. This thing's had parts taken out of it. You can see what the interior plastic's like. I don't know, man, it just gets chalky. It's part of a part of the deal. You can see the corner, how that light wraps around. It doesn't have the marker and the flat on it. Just pretty, pretty average car. It's got its rust, got its dents. It's been repainted, so you never know what's underneath that paint. Hood's not awful. I mean, it's got a few little little marks, but pretty, pretty decent overall. Windshield's good. Possible will it run fodder here. I kind of like my old crusty beaters. Average person might see that as a parts car, but I kind of see it being put together. Film around some more of these some other times and a few of them I already have 
videos on the channel for. Take a quick look at the 78. You can see those markers. Just got cracks and holes in them. That one's got a crack all the way through and loose. And that yellow part is faded out. Just hard to find that nickel and dime stuff to really make a car nice. That's why I kind of like to leave mine as beaters. So right here we've got a 1981 to 87 Regal. I'd have to check the VIN to know the exact model year. This car, somebody started stripping it out to build a drag car. So you can see she's missing the tail lights and the seats, the dash, the heater box. Got both front fenders in the car, core support. in the trunk with the other fender you can see not an awful car for rust but there are a few spots here and there showing 1981 by the door sticker pretty decent original car for what's here as far as bodywork paint appears to be all original here is a 1981 Buick Regal Coupe. This car's been parked for quite a while. Off the road since 95. Pretty straight car. Windshield is good. But you can see the problem from the vinyl top. So this car, realistically, is either going to be a roof swap from the parts car or possibly chop the top off and make a roadster if you want. I don't know. Inside, pretty average. Seats are actually decent. They'd clean up nice. Just old sun-baked Oklahoma car. Some of it would clean up. Some of it would need to be redone. Obviously, the critters have partied hard under here, so figure cleaning it out. Probably had hose and wires chewed off and may or may not still turn. Figure, worst case, you're starting over mechanically. This car they were stripping out to build probably a dirt track car. You can see the rockers are rusty. Doors I think are okay. Problem with a dirt track car is like they started to trim the bumper and trim the front fenders with the torch. 
This car has a good hood, which would go with the 81 there. So this car would have a good roof if a guy needed it for the other burgundy car. This car they said had a small V8 in it that ran Nothing spectacular, but parts is parts. If a guy needs them for another vehicle, here it is, hiding out in the woods. Goldsmobile rims look a little out of place on a Regal, but I think I know what to do to fix that. Wednesday night and about to drop a video which if you're watching this I already have got one more thing to do here and I think you know what that is so there you can see she's got the wheels is it a big deal to have the right wheels on a project car that's inoperable? Absolutely not. Is it fun? Of course. You can see it makes the look of the car right. So now I've got a full set of these guys to put on something old with the bias ply tires. To me, they'd work for any of your late 60s to early 70s cars. Comment below, what would you put these on? See, they actually are Craggers, so not a knockoff. That'll make it a lot easier to find replacement center caps for them. I'm sure they're still available from Summit or Jags or anywhere. All the buzzing in the trees has been provided by the cicadas. Cicada is a small portable device that converts tree sap into ambient noise. 